Finally, after a long journey in medical school and research, I made it to my top choice in plastic surgery residency in the US. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys how I got into plastic surgery residency as an IMG and the things that I think helped me the most into this journey. So let's get started. I want to start with my medical school experience. I'm originally from Syria. I went to Aleppo Medical School and I consistently ranked first in my school for all the years that I was there. My uh, GPA was between 93 and 97 and the final GPA was 94%. That helped me somehow in my preparation for the USMLE. The score itself is not extremely valuable in your US journey. I get asked this question a lot. Is my score in school important when I apply to residency? Personally, I don't think it has that much value. If you're ranked first, for example, that is something you can add on your CV that you were ranked first and that might give you uh, an extra advantage, but it's not a huge determinant of the selection process. If you have higher step score, that would be more important than being ranked first or having uh, high scores on your uh, school exams. But what I think uh, is an important point here is that so many students, when they decide to come to the US, they decide late in their school. And sometimes these scores are important to get into residency in your home country. So if, for example, you did not have an idea that you want to come to the US, you should prepare for your exams and get higher scores in case uh, you wanted to continue in your home country or things didn't work out and you had to stay for some time before you come to the US. So in this situation, your scores might be important. Another important point is that when you're studying for your school, you're also studying medicine. Although there are minor variations between the systems, but in general, the curriculums, the materials that are being used to teach medicine in different countries are going to be the same. So in this situation, when you're studying for your school and getting higher scores, that means you're better prepared. It's going to be easier to study for the USMLE exams to, compared to someone who did not study at all in their medical school. If you know early in your school that you want to come to the US, what you can do is prepare for your school, but also prepare for your USMLE exam start by doing question banks and I'm gonna do a specific video about how to start preparing early for the USMLE when is the optimal time to take your exam but I think your school experience is valuable if you want to dedicate more time you might consider giving more time to the USMLEs because that will also give you an advantage when you're preparing for your materials so both both are extremely important but if you have to choose one probably your USMLE scores would be more important than your school scores the second point in my experience that I want to talk about today is my USMLE step scores. The USMLE step scores are extremely important in the residency application. Why? Because they are easily identifiable by program directors. They can just look quickly at your application and have a look at this three digit score. Also, it's a standardized test, so it's the same for all applicants. So it's easy to compare applicants based on scores. But what I think applicants mistakenly think is that USMLE step scores are the most important thing and nothing else matters. That is not true. I think scores matter, but to a certain degree. Personally, on my step one, I got 271. On my step two, I got 272. So when I applied, I had both exams done and they were on my transcript. I think scores helped me a lot in my application because some, some programs have filters for the score. So they say that anyone uh, below 230 will not, we will not look at their application or anyone below 240 will not look at their application. There are exceptions to, to that. Even, even with programs that have these filters, they make exceptions for center, certain applicants they know or they have so much research or they did rotation at that institution. So there is exception to this rule. But personally, I've never heard any program that have a filter over 250. I've never heard somebody say that I only interview applicants over 260. So having a higher score helps you, but I feel talking to program directors, other applicants that after a certain point, it becomes kind of similar. So anyone 250, 255, 260, it's not going to make a huge difference. So try to get the best score you can, but don't spend too much time to get extra five or 10 points because you can use that time to do something more important. You only have limited time from the time you graduate till you start residency or you apply to residency. That's why you need to use that time to do something else such as volunteering, research, rotations, establishing connections within the field. 
So personally speaking, although I got over to 70 on both exams, I don't think that scores were the most important part of my application. And I'm gonna make detailed videos on how to prepare for step one, for step two CK, resources I used and I think would help people the most, testing strategies, what, how to study UWorld, how to study first aid, because you hear everyone uses the same materials, yet they get different scores. Why? Because the studying strategy is different. So make sure to subscribe so you get notified whenever I post these videos in the coming weeks. The third point for today's experience is the US clinical experience. There are two main types of US clinical experience. The first one is called elective, and the second one is called observership. Electives are way better than observership for one simple reason, is that you can actually interact with patient, examine them, take history, put notes in the medical records. So you function exactly as a US medical student. For this reason, you should try to get electives. One thing to keep in mind is that most schools ask for a step one score or passing step one when you apply for electives. And you have to be a medical student when you are applying for electives and doing the electives. So that's why you have to organize that time way ahead in advance because applying for elective, passing step one takes so much time. So just prepare yourself, have a timeline for these things to happen before you graduate. The other type of rotation is called observerships. Observerships are different from electives because you cannot have patient contact. You can observe medical care in the hospital, but you cannot actually touch patients or examine them or write history, uh, put notes in the medical records. There is a type called externship in which you have some type of patient contact, but it's not electives. I do not prefer externship because usually they're not done in big hospitals where there are residencies. So if you can secure an externship or hands-on clinical rotation, even after you graduate, that would be perfect, but try to make it in a place where you wanna do your residency. Personally, I did three electives, one in plastic surgery and two in general surgery, two observerships, one in neurology, and one in plastic surgery, and I did three virtual rotations. The institution I matched at, I did a virtual rotation at. I was planning actually to do an observership because I already graduated at that time, but due to COVID, uh, this observership was canceled and I had the chance to do a virtual rotation. I think that virtual rotation helped me to get in that institution because I talked to the faculty there, established connections with the residents, at the end of the virtual rotation, we were given the chance to present in front of the whole department virtually. So I think it was a great experience. The disadvantage of virtual rotations is that you don't get the chance to have a letter of recommendation or the same type of interactions that you would have in person. So definitely if you can do in-person rotations, that would be way better than the virtual ones. But if you don't have that option, virtual rotations can be very helpful. The fourth part in my experience that I want to talk about today is research. Research, I think, is one of the most important things in my application that helped me match into plastic surgery. Why? There are different aspects in which research can help you get into residency. The first of which, getting research publications. When you do research, you get the chance to learn how to do research, how to conduct experiments, how to collect data, maybe how to do statistical analysis, how to write papers, and that can show your contributions to the literature, how you want to change the field, how you want to contribute and make a difference in, in patients' lives. The other part, and I think another very, very important part of doing research, is when you're doing research, you're generally spending six months, a year, two years in, in, in a lab or with some kind of mentor, and you establish that personal connection, and usually your mentor will support you and help you to get into residency especially if they are well known within the field or if they have some kind of connection within the program or other programs. So that's another extremely important part of doing research is to establish connections with, within the institution or when you're presenting, for example, you go to a meeting and you present your abstract or your work at, an, uh, at a national meeting or international one, and you get the chance to meet other research fellows, other residents, other program directors, and this could be an opportunity to get an interview. So these connections that you establish during research can help you a lot when you're uh, applying to residency, especially competitive ones. For me personally, I did three years of research. The first one was at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and then two years at MD Anderson. So at the time of application, I did two years, and by the time I start residency, it would be three years. Uh, the number of publications and presentations matter, 
but also the quality. So you have to be careful on how many publications you have, in which journals, how far are you on the authorship list. So by the time I applied, I looked on my ERAS CV, I had 42 or presentations, uh, 34 uh, poster presentations. Regarding publications, at the time of my application, I had 48 published, 14 in press, 7 accepted, 3 provisionally accepted, and 20 submitted. I had three online publications, which are mainly blog posts on different websites and two other type of articles. I'll make a detailed video on how to get the research position, how to be productive during the research years. But again, don't focus only on the numbers, the quality of the journal of publications matter, the type of publications matter. Only I, of these, only I had two case reports, maybe three review articles. So the majority of my work was original articles, research articles, and this is what matters the most. And why I personally think that research was one of the most important things that helped me uh, get into residency is because when I was interviewing, this was the first thing that people asked me about. This was the thing that I was asked about the most. And finally, when you're doing research, you establish that type of personal connection with your mentors. You're working with, with them for a year or two and they would be able to know you and recommend you more to programs compared to someone who knew you for a week or two. So letters of recommendation from your research mentor who you worked with for a long time can help you a lot in your residency application. Another point related to research is being a peer reviewer. I'm a peer reviewer for uh, numerous plastic surgery journals and at the time of my application, I have reviewed over 100 papers and this was something that was brought up in a uh, few interviews when I was applying to residency. They asked me about my experience, what did I learn from this and I've personally learned a lot from being a peer reviewer and it's uh, I'm also on the editorial board of some of the plastic surgery journals. It helps you also establish connections within the field you're applying to. The fifth point I want to talk about today is volunteering and leadership skills. Personally, I volunteered in Syria, I volunteered in Houston, in Rochester, and these type of volunteering helps you stand out or show a part of you other than your academic achievements. So if, for example, you're in your home country or in the US, you can just search in your own hospitals or in on Google, you can just type volunteering opportunities in wherever you're living, and you can find something that you're passionate about because this will show, again, a different aspect of you. Regarding leadership, I'm the chair of the teaching subcommittee of the postdoc association at MD Anderson. And this, again, can show your leadership skills or how you're able to manage a team, how you're able to interact with people. I'm also part of the committees of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. And again, this can show that you're a person who would like to contribute to society, give back, and there are so many opportunities for medical students in every single society for internal medicine, for surgery. So just ask your mentors or pre more senior colleagues, what are the opportunities out there that you can contribute and help? And if you have time, effort and passion, you can do it. Moving on to the sixth and final point that I want to talk about today, which is your background or what makes you unique. You might be an Olympic player. You might be a professional piano player. You might have suffered some kind of challenges that make you unique or stand out or have th these type of experience or culture that would enrich diversity within the program. So you don't have to invent something new here. You just search within your experiences that you, you've been through what, what type of uh, something new or unique you can bring to the program. And this is something you can either highlight within your personal statement or you can bring it up during the, inter the interview. This year, because of the virtual nature of interviews, we had the chance to have a background. So for example, you see this bookcase, I, I chose certain things from my own culture, from my hobbies, that was a point for bringing up uh, my hobbies. Uh, I know one of the applicants who had some kind of paintings in her background to bring up a discussion point about uh, her ability to paint. So. Just try to find what makes you unique or stand out and bring that, some, bring that somehow in your personal statement or your background if next year interviews will be virtual or you can bring that during a discussion with the, one of the faculty or one of the residents. So this is my experience which got me into plastic surgery residency. I hope it can help you to do the same match into plastic surgery or any other competitive specialty or any specialty in the US. I'm gonna start posting more and more videos about 
these details of the USMLE scores, research, how to get a research position, how to get an elective. So if you're interested in watching any of these videos, make sure to subscribe so you get notified whenever I post these videos in the future. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malki Asad or my Facebook page, Malki Asad MD. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I also want to thank you for being here, supporting me and helping me along the way. And see you in future videos. Peace.